uh, to order. If we could, we are still conducting these meetings uh, remotely as the Metropolitan Council determined it's not practical or prudent to conduct in person meetings in response to the COVID 19 pandemic. Accordingly, we will participate via phone or other electronic means at the meeting and will be conducted under Minnesota Statutes 13D.021 uh, on today's date. We encourage you to monitor the meeting remotely. If you have any questions, we encourage members of the public to email us at public.info at metc dot state dot mn dot us and respond to your comments in a timely manner so with that can we call the roll please barbara barbara i thought i saw her she must have technical difficulties gonzalez uh, present. Johnson. Here. Lee. Luce. Aye. Ferguson. Here. Thank you. Thank you. We have quorum. And we see Miss Deb Councilmember Barber on on video, so I'm assuming she is here. She is. We cannot hear you. <laughs> now we can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Um, if there's any changes to the agenda, we can make those changes now. Otherwise, we will move on to approval of the minutes of the September 22nd uh, meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the September 22nd meeting? Sure, moved by Barber. Okay, moved by Barber. Is there a second? Technical Johnson, second. Oh. Seconded by Gonzalez. Is there a is there any questions, comments? All right, seeing none, can we call the roll, please? Barber. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Lucy. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. The first business item we have three business items today. And one information item. Our first business item is business item 2021-265, ratification of the emergency declaration for COVID-19 related procurement. Phil? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, committee members. This uh, business item is seeking ratification of an emergency declaration related to COVID tests um, in an amount not to exceed $1,835,000. Now, as you know, the council implemented a policy related to workers that were on site um, and that policy required on site weekly testing, right? Sorry, required testing on a weekly basis. And in lieu of that, though, there could also be proof of vaccination that could be submitted. So as the council's incident command team worked through what it took to put this into place and, and uh, what we had to implement to meet that October 11th timeline, we realized that there was a need obviously to have access for employees to undergo this testing. So this uh, emergency declaration addresses that need. It allows us to purchase test kits from vault for both the take home test kit and also the on site test kit. Um, in addition to that, it allows for uh, testing at various clinics around the metro area that we expanded the, con the terms and conditions of our contract uh, with health partners. And it also has rapid tests for our police department and our MTS contractors. So again, Mr. Chair, this allows us to bridge that gap uh, to procure the test kits, to allow for the testing um, at the onsite, I'm sorry, at the clinics around the Metro until such time in, that we can partner with the state and utilize their master contract. And we're anticipating continuing that in December. And again, so the emergency declaration um, is an amount not to exceed $1,835,000. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Are there any questions from council members? Mr. Chair? Go ahead, Councilmember Barber. Um, no questions. I just want to let you know that I will be abstaining from this vote. Okay. Uh, and I'll just, I'll, I will just make one comment. If, uh, Phil and I had a conversation about this. I think one of the things that 
just as we get into sort of this more regular testing that goes on, you know, we're out of the original emergency that happened. We just want to think about what are our standards and expectations for people that are doing testing for us and turning around those test results, especially if we have you know, people that are waiting to come back to work until test results are done um, or just so just more broadly, um, just be thinking about what what standards make sense can, you know, assuming that we will probably have a text testing uh, expectation for a, an extended period of time uh, that we'll have to do and we'll have more of these contracts that may not fall under our emergency procedures, but just just more broadly. So just be thinking about what, what it means uh, and what those standards should uh, should be as we move forward. So, any other comments? All right, seeing none, can we call the roll, please? Oh, sorry, can we get a motion to approve uh, business item 2021-265? Johnson moves. Okay, moved by Johnson. Is there a second? Yeah, second by Gonzalez. All right, moved by Johnson, seconded by Gonzalez. Any other comments, questions, discussion? All right, seeing none, can we call the roll, please? Gonzalez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Muse. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Thank you. I have noted that council member Barber abstained. Right. Thank you. And the motion carries. Our second business item is business item 2021-271, annual sole source hardware software maintenance service contract. Teresa. Good afternoon, Chair Ferguson and council members. My name is Teresa Nisler. Assistant Director of IS Finance and Budget, and I'm here to today. I'm here today to present business item 2021-271, the annual sole source list of vendors that provide hardware and software maintenance and support services, along with the dollar amount associated with those services. This is an annual process we've brought to the council since at least 2006. A sole source is a product or service that can only be fulfilled by the specified vendor. Computer hardware and software purchased by the council requires ongoing maintenance and support. Competitive procurements for the hardware and software have already been completed. This item addresses ongoing maintenance and support services resulting from those competitive procurements. As you know, the council has some very specialized business lines. Those business lines often come with very narrow vendor availability. The sole source vendor amounts when taken individually wouldn't rise to the dollar level that would require council approval, but when taken together certainly do. And that's why I'm here today to increase the transparency. We bring the full list to council annually to review and approve for the upcoming calendar year. This benefits the council by council members having the opportunity to see the overall spend for sole source maintenance and support services and it saves the administrative time and effort to process each of these one at a time. Through the ongoing partnership and collaboration with the procurement and contracts team, we have been able to continue to hold the line on sole sources that were rising substantially year over year to a level not seen since before 2016 when the list was close to $10 million a year. As a team, we continue to reevaluate the list each year to determine if resellers have become available over the past 12 months and make those changes if the marketplace has made resellers available. Through these efforts, we've been able to bring our trend line down to under a 2.5% average increase year over year since 2012. With that brings me to today's proposed action that the Metropolitan Council authorize the regional administrator to make ongoing maintenance, hosted services, and support service payments as sole source purchase orders in an amount not to exceed $5,496,600. This includes installed software and hardware as listed on the attached 2022 Information Services Sole Source Vendor List. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Are there any questions on this business item? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve business item 2021-271? 
Moved by Barber. Moved by Barber. Is there a second? Um, second by Gonzalez. Right. Moved by Barber, seconded by Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, can we call the roll, please? Johnson. I'm sorry, Barber. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Muse. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And the motion carries. Our last Thank you very much. Thank you. Our last business item is 2021-276, Minnesota State Retirement System Program for Unclassified Retirement Plan. Marcy. Good afternoon, Chair Ferguson and Council members. Um, I'm here to present uh, item number 2021-276, and I'm Marcy Simon, the Director of Human Resources. Um, this is really a housekeeping item. The Minnesota statute allows the council to designate up to 27 positions for participation in the unclassified retirement plan of the, the Minnesota State Retirement System. And as the organization changes and our, our titles change um, over time, we need to update MSRS with our current titles. So this particular item is simply a memo to the MSRS that indicates how our titles have changed and which titles will be participating in the unclassified plan of the MSRS. Um, so it, it really is just a standard practice of something we need to do um, day in and day out or year in and year, year out. And so um, the proposed action is that the council approves the attached resolution. Um, MSRS requires that the board um, or the council approve the changes to the plan. So with that, I'll take any questions. Are there any questions about the changes? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve business item 2021-276? So moved by Gonzalez. Seconded by Johnson. Moved by Gonzalez, seconded by Johnson. Is there any other discussion? All right, seeing none, can we call the roll, please? Barber. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Muse. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Thank you. And the motion carries. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move that the meeting um, uh, be closed to the public pursuant to Minnesota statute sections 13D.05 subdivision 3B and applicable case law so that the committee can discuss with our legal counsel in a confidential setting attorney, attorney client privilege matters. Thank you. Is there a second to close the meeting? Second by Barber. All right, seconded by Barber. And just uh, the public body by majority vote and a public meeting may decide to hold a closed meeting under section 13D.05 subdivision 3B of the Minnesota Open Meeting Laws to discuss attorney client privilege matters. Discussing these litigation matters is a confidential setting with the council to engage in a candid discussion and resolve these matters in a way that benefits the council and the public. Discussions during the closed portion of the meeting to, is to discuss attorney client privilege matters and we confined to the pending litigation matters listed in the committee agenda. Can we call uh, uh, the roll to close the meeting? Barber. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Muse. Aye. Ferguson. Aye. Thank and you. Carries. Thank you. Before we close the meeting to discuss pending litigation, I'd like to inform members of the public who are monitoring this meeting and for the record that the committee will adjourn immediately after the discussion of this information item and that the committee will not have any discussions or conduct any business after this information item is complete. For the record, please note this meeting was closed to the public at 
2.17 p.m. on October 27, 2021.